anyway, uh, should we start? I guess we should. Uh, do, do we need some kind of an official fanfare? Uh, play the title music or, or, or something like that. Uh, I guess welcome to the webinar uh, would, would, would be great. Uh, thank you for joining. And um, I, I shall, should we start with slides uh, now that we totally have a, totally have slides made uh, in, the, in the last five minutes? So um, yeah, welcome to the webinar. Thank you for joining. Uh, we'll get right to it. I, I used to like um, been doing these webinars uh, a few years, and people did give me, uh, you know, feedback of not jumping to the subject quickly enough. Uh, like maybe I was talking about like you know what's been happening with the company, what happens in the industry, blah blah blah. So we'll just jump into the uh, beef quickly, and then we'll you know include some banter here and there. How about that? So so nobody gets upset of us not getting there quickly enough. Uh, yeah, so today we're going to talk about wireless network lifecycle at scale, whatever that means. Uh, we'll, we'll figure out, all of us, uh, including myself and Dan, uh, we'll figure it out uh, through the course of the webinar. So with us, we have uh, Mr. Dan Jones. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, this is, first of all, of, of course, it's all about me and me and also me. So so um, I'm Yussi. Uh, hit me up on LinkedIn if you haven't. There's a, a fancy, uh, or, or not fancy, uh, but a useful QR code that you can just snag a picture with your phone. And that takes to my LinkedIn profile. Click connect and uh, we'll be connected. I post about Wi-Fi stuff and especially about Hamina stuff, but mostly about me and my extravagant travels and my extravagant home and, and, uh, and you know, my collection of Rolls Royces. Uh, anyway, uh, Dan, how are you, man? Yeah, good. I don't post about my extravagant lifestyle and Rolls Royces. I mainly, I mainly post about whatever boring thing I happen to be doing that day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so who are you, and why do you think you're here? Who am I? God, this is getting it's getting deep quick, isn't it? That's a philosophical um, question. <laughs> Keep with the job titles and everything. Just uh, right, let's okay, talk fine, about yeah. you, Dan. What's on your mind today? <laughs> so yeah, I'm uh, I'm Dan Jones. I'm a, a solutions architect, networking architect for uh, like a VAR, I guess, um, in the UK called Natilic. I say UK. We're also in America and Australia as well. Is it VAR or MSP or what is it? Both. So we do we do we do both. <laughs> we we uh, we've got a big managed service thing that we do as well. Um, yeah. So yeah. I'm 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 just basically I'm I'm like the Wi-Fi guy at Natilic. That's all I do. That's all I focus on is just Wi-Fi, which seems like a pretty sweet gig to me. I'm not, not sure how I landed that. That's very cool. And you're a CWNE, and Natilic uh, pushes a lot of boxes. These these Wi-Fi box things, right? Uh, so you guys are pretty significant. You you uh, push like and and you you kind of uh, design, deploy, and sell to the largest sites in the UK. May, many of those, not all of them, obviously, but but many of them. Is yeah, yeah, we've we've yeah. we've got we've got a few big places, got a few big sites. Um, that I think the thing that I enjoy about what I do right is that it's so varied. We've got things from Formula One teams to zoos to stadiums to you know things like that. You know, so loads of really kind of varied, quite cool places that i get to go and pretend i'm working at you know which is good and yeah and we we enjoy that too uh, like we kind of get the same uh similar luxury in hamina so you get the kind, kind of the you know the, the biggest companies in the world to work with and and then there's the like we no joke uh, as a paying customer we, we for example have a botox clinic from thailand uh <laughs> we, we've never gotten a chance to speak with them they just overnight like uh you know some of the customers they just land out on our website they buy the product they, they self-service themselves and we never hear from them i think i tried to reach out to them haven't heard from them yet so if you work for that botox clinic in thailand uh <laughs> hit me up and then we have like a tortilla factory in mexico uh you, you know you know that we, we we never heard of these and and you know yeah it's very very cool i i agree um yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, Dan, for joining. It's a it's a pleasure. Uh, and and obviously, where where can people find you besides this LinkedIn QR code or or? Yeah, so uh, I've got blog hashtag wifi dot com. Uh, I do that, um, and also a, a podcast you can find called the Wireless Pubcast. That's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's rubbish though, so I wouldn't bother listening to that. It's 
terrible. <laughs> That's a pretty scary. You're, you're you're the worst marketing person I've ever met. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, definitely don't listen to it. Yeah, it's just a waste of forty five minutes of your life, basically. So, yeah. hey, we all have television <laughs> sets, so we we enjoy a lot of that. So we all have our guilty pleasures of reality television, for example. Talk about and Dan. Time. It can't be any worse than our pre-webinar banter. So, you know, we, <laughs> we, we keep the the low bar. Nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, I promise to jump into the subject quickly. So so why, why don't we do, do that? So, so some of the topics we'll be covering today is kind of like uh, troubleshooting at scale and, and kind of, uh, you know, the various methods of troubleshooting and then designing deployment at, at scale and, and collaborating with teams and then, you know, a little bit about like budgeting pricing stuff like that for the tools as well so yeah let's jump right to it so so we'll start with job troubleshooting dan i'm not even gonna ask like what what happened here uh i want to know what happened to my hand <laughs> <laughs> it's always the hands isn't it yeah, it's yeah, always yeah AI, AI happened that's what happened you know how much time I spent building this picture? Well, with a little bit of help from AI. And then you have to mention the hands. Thanks a lot. Sorry. sorry. I'm sure you're genuinely sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so so every now and then uh, we get the occasional troubleshooting call, right? And I, I was going to animate this slide, but obviously, you know, we ran out of time. So, so uh, but here's kind of, like I was trying to think for most companies we talk to, like, uh, of course, every company does this differently, but I was trying to find the uh, common denominators of like, how does a troubleshooting case go? Uh, like, how is the, you know, from opening the ticket to, to resolving it, if it's one of the toughest cases where it kind of goes through the entire stack. How, how does this work for you, you Dan? And, and uh, audience also, feel free to hit up on, on the chat how this goes for you. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Does this make any sense, or or uh, and and this is kind of like it tries to divide them to. Let's say you have three different personas troubleshooting. So the green ones would be a, a guy in the kind of, kind of level one support. Then there would be a network engineer, and then if need be, there will be a like CWNA type of level network architect involved. So 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 what do you think, Dan? Yeah, this is this is very kind of uh, familiar to to me. You know, so things kind of get. Uh, escalated up the 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 stack as it were um and i think yeah the w one of the main things that you know you kind of get quite a lot is the knock will kind of phone me and say you know we we've done this we've done this we've done this here here are the logs here's the packet capture here's the so it's like i'm gonna need to get a site like i'm gonna need to get a site and just see see what's going on you know let's get a survey done let's figure out you know what's going on all that kind of stuff so yeah, this is uh, this is like ninety percent of what what my job ends up being. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I I think the less down the stack you go, if the design has been made appropriately for the network in the first place. So so it would be nice to like if there was data of like uh, if you actually did a validation survey, how much uh, you know this escalation drops and how much the the number of the support tickets drops. Uh, but obviously, it would be probably a very big number, but but hard to find that kind of data. Yeah, it def definitely has a big impact, right? If you can go in and get that validation survey done, but it's also convincing the client that they should pay for that too, right? Because exactly. it's, it's not it's not necessarily a, a, a cheap exercise to to go down. So exactly, exactly, and I mean for small carpeted spaces, uh, you know, you know, making that truck roll might not make sense, but but I mean. You're pretty brave if you deploy a factory, uh, you, you know, a warehouse, a hospital without without doing a, a validation surveys, or, you know, uh, even a hotel cost like, I mean, and this is actually a difference between I uh, sorry to stereotypize, but but uh, for example, like hotels in the states and maybe northern Europe and central Europe, they have really good Wi-Fi typically because that like the Wi-Fi budget seems to be bigger. But then you, you know you, you go to some of the uh, you, you know uh, hotels. Maybe it's also like resorts or, or like these holiday hotels that are not a part of the chain. So there's no like structured way of doing things and the processes are not like Phil Jackson, Hilton, Hilton level processes. Uh, then, you know, you see degraded Wi-Fi in the hotels. 
uh, and and people don't come back like like I mean Wi-Fi even for holiday resorts it's 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 pretty important I would think uh, yeah it's a must nowadays isn't it yeah absolutely how was the how was the um, Wi-Fi at the spa you just from of the luxury spa you just came from Dan it says a man <laughs> who's been working like twenty four seven for the last two weeks here in Silicon Valley how was the network at the spa you went to uh it was actually really good <laughs> i was surprised at how good it was um I'm, yeah. I, I hope you didn't use it for work though oh if my wife's ever gonna watch which she won't no yeah no yeah i i was able to work fine without any issues <laughs> um but yeah uh, anyway the point being that um you know for this process here, like kind of the, the first time anybody really looks at like uh, RF data in any level of granularity is pretty late in the process. And this is like, I'm sure like all the customers and, and, and you know, the knock guys would like you, Dan, to go on site every time. And and often it's necessary anyway, sure. But yeah. but maybe there's also, also something we could do uh, like prior to that. And maybe there's something missing like, like up here. Uh, and th this is kind of what we've been... As, as a tools vendor, this has been back of my mind for, for the longest time. And finally, now that, uh, you know, we've, we've had this cloud-based Wi-Fi, it's made, you know, uh, extracting data from the networking systems quite a lot easier. Uh, and, and this has been a pet peeve of, of mine for a while. Uh, but, but yeah, should, should, should we actually look at something we've done done so so uh first on a conceptual level so so if we look at and these the, the vendors here are what we what we uh are starting up with uh but any vendor of course that has su sufficient api coverage will, will be added uh, so so we have a cloud-based network uh wi-fi network that connects to the hamina cloud that then connects to uh you, you know your your comp or like you know you, you look at it from your web browser on the left hand side and like uh we started we, we announced our first like you know uh integrations with these major vendors i think 2022 wlpc in february so 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 since then and nobody has had this as a tools vendors be, be, before that so so we've been trying to kind of pioneer our way and, and we've been doing this like automatic click of a button deployment for for you know networks after the rf design stuff like that but i think this takes it to the next level where uh you know we can we can actually feed or like extract all the live data from a live site within a fraction of a second like that using the APIs and the APIs are rich enough to extract like a boatload of data and then we can actually you know take it to the Hamina cloud add some of our secret sauce from Hamina like the way we do visualizations heat maps antenna radiation patterns wall structure information information about other objects things like that and then we throw that onto your screen so that you wouldn't only see the network as it was planned, as it was surveyed. By the way, we we, we are now disclaimer: we are now shipping in volume our Kika site survey solution. Buy it now. Buy it. Buy it. Hamina.com. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Um, but anyway, uh, but but so, so where was I? Uh, these advertisement breaks uh, that are mandatory. That we have, we actually have a boss that mandates these advertisement breaks. Uh, otherwise, I'll get kicked out from the company. Um, so so anyway, uh, what what does this mean in practice? Sh should we take a look at this? Uh, Dan, you want to go first, or should I go first? Uh, you you go. I don't, I don't, huh? You want me to go? Yeah, go on, go on, man. Okay, right. Let's uh, let's share my screen. And just to emphasize, this feature is not shipping yet. Uh, it is as you can see, Dan is using our test cloud, so so it is not publicly available but Dan has been has been kind of uh you know you, you've been a can I say you're you've been a guinea pig for for this is, is that an appropriate th thing to say you've been trying this out uh, uh, like, well, why like, not uh, <laughs> all right here so this 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 was like my my simulation right um uh, but then obviously uh I've now connected it up to get all the live information from from the dashboard as well, which is awesome. So, so, so this is how your network is running at this very second, and you can flip back and forth between simulation and live. So, so what you're seeing on the live tab is actually 
up to the second, uh, you know, how this network is working. When you click live, we actually extract all the data I showed you on the slide and visualize that on, on the screen, current transmission powers at this second, uh, cu current channels, current channel widths, uh, you, you know, current AP locations, everything from the networking vendor cloud. So, yeah. so, so, so yeah, I mean, how do you like, how do you like those, those, uh, that six gigahertz channel width that I've got going on there? Yep. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not how it should be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. But at least exactly. I know it now. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And yeah. then, um, then, then you can um, can also like, um, yeah, do do simulations. Or you, you know, just click off a button. You, you go to the simulation side if you wanted to like simulate what how, what would happen. You know, if you added AP stuff like that. Uh, and and the live is kind of like a read only thing. Uh, so it always preserves. You cannot mess it up. You cannot mess up your network. Uh, exactly it says like cannot move items uh but but your simulation is your sandbox you can do whatever you want uh what if scenarios uh you can pull it back and say what if i actually refresh this network you know added a few few more aps you know th things like that so and it's multi-floor it is also multi-floor exactly exactly you can see the aps uh, radiating from from different floors all, all of that kind of stuff and yeah Yep, exactly, exactly. Um, so, I mean, for layer one support, what do you think then? Um, if, if you flip through like coverage, you can look at coverage, secondary coverage. Let's see your secondary coverage, for example, here, or, or interference, exactly. Uh, so, for example, let's say somebody calls calls in and says they have roaming problems on the on the north end side, uh, you know, in the, near the staircase or something like that. Then, then you could be like, yeah, hey, remember, first of all, uh, I see a note here that is out of scope. And, and secondly, like, yeah, yeah, there is actually secondary, not perfect secondary coverage in that area, stuff like that. Or, or yeah, if the RRM, the RRMs are pretty good, but if it did a bad job with a, with a channel assignment, you could immediately, immediately see it here too. Yeah, love it. So, so do you think your your knock uh, would find this useful, Dan? Um... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, e you know, even for for things like, you know, being able to see straight away, um, you know, APs that are, are much louder than than maybe we were expecting them to be, you know, um, exactly. things like that, um, and also <laughs> things straight away like seeing, hey this channel width is is really large so something's gone wrong with the rf profile there because that is not what we had in in our design you know um so yeah and don't get me wrong like many of these things can be seen on the wi-fi vendor dashboard i think this just like it's a to me, it's a pretty pleasing. Well, I might be slightly biased, but it's a pleasing way to to see the network as well. Like it's not just tables, graphs, things like things like that. But we have a lot of things in one place, including a pretty detailed RF uh, and analysis uh, as well. Yeah. So th this was one where where I hadn't, I didn't have walls previously, right? And yeah. um, one one of the things that um, that I noticed, you know, again, like these APs are, are turned down a lot. Yeah. But there were there were other APs that were that were really really loud. So on the six gigahertz, so you can yeah. see that that's really really yeah. loud. Yeah. That's really really quiet. You know, and just being yeah. able to yeah. show and explain that to a client as well, and say, hey customer, you know, we've made these cells really small on purpose, um, but something's gone wrong with this one. This is why you've got loads of clients connected. <laughs> you know, we need to go in and actually have a look at that and and check that out. Exactly, exactly. And by the way, we just added, if you've added like, uh, you know, high capacity stuff in there, things like that, we do, in the, again, not shipping yet, but but I think for some of the vendors, we actually even extract the capacity, live capacity information from the network as well. And I'm not sure if we pushed it in already, but it also does switching. It shows you like, you know, which AP is connected to which switch and stuff like that. And, and you know, you know, uh, as long as the switches are placed on the map, but yeah, yeah, uh, it's it's it is pretty cool. Let me uh, let me actually uh, get a project uh, going here as as well. Uh, 
And you see, while you're doing that, um, there's been some great yeah. questions and stuff coming in through the chat and also through the Q&A tool. So I just want to remind everybody, that if you have questions, please feel free to put those in the Q&A tool. Uh, some of them we'll answer as we go. I think Jerry's been answering some in the background there. Uh, and some of them we'll save towards the end, depending on stuff. So yeah, throw, those, throw the questions in the Q&A tool. We'd appreciate it quite a bit. Absolutely. That's that's great. That Thank you, Joel. And, and we could we could address them uh, some of them in a couple of minutes as well, uh, even even before the end, if people can't make it. So let me let me try and uh, share my desktop. Can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. So here's a here's a network somewhere, uh, you, you know, the other side of the pond. And sa same thing here, like you know, simulation. You can you can of course do do whatever whatever you want with with the simulation, uh, all of that stuff. That. That that works normally and and, and things like that. Um, then what what I really like about it is you can flip to survey and Im instantly also see see how, how it looks like. Uh, oh my Zoom is blocking my controls on the screen, but yeah yeah you can immediately see like how does it look surveyed and if you haven't checked our survey stuff, it's pretty badass. Uh, so so highly recommend uh, checking out Hamina on site on our website and and you know also. We are happy to demo it, so please contact hamina.com-demo <laughs> hamina to uh, get your personalized demo of the site survey tool. Bye 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 bye. Uh, anyway, uh, so so um, so yeah, uh, you can you can analyze it how it was simulated, how it was site surveyed, and how the network looks at this very second. Like, like I can't emphasize like how to me like how cool this is to see how the network is running in its current state uh, with with all of, all of this so so and we are working with all of the major vendors to kind of kind of you know add more features and, and you know this is this is kind of like uh, it really nicely complements uh, your networking dashboard and what we've talked with a lot of the vendors is like you get the, uh, i really like the the ideology of like AI based alerts and and in in general like alerts from the network you get that alert uh, and and then you know the alert says there's an RF problem on the second floor, and then you kind of it's just another browser tab that that you have, and and you can dive in and actually see that. And I think I think the the thing that we're going to find really useful about this, right, is you know our 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 first level support guys, our second level support guys haven't necessarily been to site, and so for them to have something that's not just the map in the dashboard but there is something that's a bit more interactive something that they can zoom in and out of they can see the 3d space you know they they can go oh that meeting room that's just there yeah the the ap that's just passed that on your way to the step you know what i mean like that gives so much more context um to the conversations that they can then have and they've never been to site you know so again like for me that's that's where this kind of really comes to the fore and then them having that kind of live overlay data on top of that is just like the icing on the cake exactly exactly for example here you could you could see that uh oh shoot uh secondary coverage is probably probably a bit of an issue and the kind of red green thing it's it's fairly intuitive so, so let's say your knock guys are route and switch uh by, by training they can yeah. still like extract the map by quite a bit and they they could actually just then you know go go to simulation uh sim well what would happen if i of the same kind uh, of ap what if i added one more here well, yeah yeah that would actually actually help but what would happen to my cci and, and stuff like that so so it's it's pretty easy to for them to not just see how the current situation is, but help you. Oh, my API key expired. But uh, but but to see like how uh, how it um, you know the simple things that might might help uh, in here as well. Hey, you see, there was a, a question that I think is a good one um, around downlink versus uplink. Um, is that something that we can show as part of the live? And that was specifically in relation to the live view. By default, oh. we're showing the the downlink, right? But we can flip that. Oh, do the Reno. That's a that's a great question. Who asked that? It was a mystery S uh, <laughs> question, so I'm not sure. Someone named S. Someone named S. Uh, thank you, S. How do you put in your real name? We would have given you a million years of free humina, but <laughs> Joel is like, no, no, uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> oh. 
on the on that topic, uh, there, there is actually uh, you, you know anybody that coming to this is going uh, like sideways. But any, if anybody is coming to WLPC, our price for the WLPC uh, evening event is actually this. This is the actual coupon that we're we're about to print in. It's like five years. <laughs> It's like the the lifetime warranty, but you know it's only the exactly. last five years. Exactly, full one hundred percent lifetime guarantee, guarantee, guarantee void after one year. But yeah, anyway, anyway, where was I? Where was I? Oh yeah, webinar uplink downlink. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. So just like in our planner in general, uh, you can actually look at. Well, let's look at a project where I actually have a valid API key going. So, so uplink versus downlink again, live situation. And and when I change the project, it fetches it from the API. Like takes takes a hundred milliseconds. It's surprisingly snappy. Uh, like how quickly it kind of updates. There's no waiting. So downlink versus uplink, absolutely, absolutely. Just like we do with the prediction. And I think in general, kind of like uh, there's been this downlink only bias uh, from the industry for the longest time but when we started also working with with more with the private cellular guys and with some of the iot people it became clear that you know not only in wi-fi but especially in private 5g iot the uplink is often the weak link so so and for us of course the up uh, you know uh, down uplink works as well as downlink it works in the simulation it works in live as well do you ever uh, use this dan and uh, and you know have you tried the uplink uplink visuals yeah 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 it's really again like for me one of the one of the nicest things about your solution right is that i use it as an education tool massively when i'm taking people through designs um you know even when the the network goes in now i'll be using this as like a hey this is this is how your this is how your network's going to work this is how your clients are going to respond to it um, and it it massive massively helps to get the reasons why we've done something across. And um, it was so difficult to do that previously with that kind of static report, right? Um, and so this is this is really useful. And then being able to do that and then give that URL to to someone in that report so they can go and do it to the people they've got to go and report to as well, right? Is really important. Exactly, good. exactly. And and yeah, if you have a weak, uh, you know, a fairly weak client with a weak TX power, and this happens all the time, um, you know, any kind of IoT device, televisions, whatever, you just put in the client TX power and, and you know, you can see the pretty massive difference between uplink and downlink. Uh, and to me, it's, it's also about like, RTLS, like if you're designing for location services and you need tertiary coverage, that, like this is where, where the requirements get pretty strict. But if you need to design for tertiary coverage, let's say for, for BLE uh, and, you know, the BLE tags, uh, this is usually it's uplink that you care about. The tags need to reach the APs and the tags need to reach like the weak, very weak transmit power tags that need to last for years. So they have, a, you know, they, they use low transmission power. They need to reach uh, at least three APs. So how do you work that out, right? Uh, how, how how do you factor all of that in? That's that's the question. So So let's look at uplink. And there's almost nothing on, on this side because uh, like it can be as weak as minus 12 dBm, right? A, a BLE tag can be as weak as this. So you would need to probably add a boatload of like a normal Wi-Fi network, even even if it's missed BLE array, just doesn't cut it necessarily. So, so you might want to add either. Well, let's say in this case, because it's a, it's a missed wet network, you would add add uh, this, you know, BT elevens uh, on on the side and kind of start to start to see increased location granularity. So where you see green, we see more than next, you know, more uh, three. We see three APs at next seventy. So so it just just helps a lot in that. And and actually, if I were deploying location, maybe that's overkill. So maybe we we could say uh, we need, you know, our green is actually we at next 75 so so there we go so it starts to look better but definitely like if you want a high location granularity we all know that rtls is so tough in general so do not save on the number of ble radios uh wi-fi radios whatever yeah yeah uh so so that's uh 
that's that. Uh, I, I did I see on the chat a question about like uh, which version of Hamina will this be in and stuff like that. Uh, Joel Gerber, did I? I thought yeah, I saw... there, there was there was a question in there, uh, and I forget where it was. I think it was in the chat, but I think the question was like, which which subscription tier would this capability be in? Sorry, I don't remember who asked that, but excellent question. And and like yeah, there, there's been we put a lot of thoughts on monetizing the. Oh no, we have we had zero time to to think about monetization <laughs> to be to be honest so so we figured like we hope people start using this and adopting it and we'll figure out like an ideal business model for this later so so in, in the beginning this will be a part of the network planner plus license so if you have the plus license it gives you the live button uh that you can then analyze the plus also gives you the uplink heat maps private 5g stadium sloped floors raised floors you kind of advanced 3d capabilities Okay. Okay. Um, if there's any any more questions about that, this this guy, uh... well, there was uh, there, there was a question here on the look, looks good for an office space. How about event centers and stadiums? Um, I am absolutely planning on using this as part of our live looking after a big tennis tournament in the UK this year. <laughs> so yeah, I will absolutely be using it as part of that. So. Uh, yeah, if that helps, like I can see a massive use case for that, that type of thing. Just the ability again to be able to see across such a wide space in one in one place um, without having to trawl through, you know, screens and screens and screens. Uh, but see how it's actually affecting that space live is uh, is going to be really useful. Excellent. Any other any, any other project projects? Any other use cases you want to uh, you want us to check out, Dan, or should we move forward? No, 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 no. Move, we can move forward. I don't want to take up less time. No, no, no. That's what you're here, man. Um, I, I happen to saw one nerd knob actually. Uh, since we're looking at an unreleased version, uh, should we spill some more beans? Maybe. Uh, what, what do you think, guys? Jerry, Joel, Dan. Uh, maybe we should spill them. Spill them. <laughs> spill them, boy. Uh, so, so. Um, do I do I have the let, let's let's take a look at the wall wall structures here, yeah. So so here's a because um, of course I saw a nerd knob there on the uh, that that's not released. So so let's take a look at some something. Let's just put in one one AP for example. We'll, we'll create a simple example. So so uh, depending on kind of kind of how you're uh, how you're simulating Wi-Fi, usually like. Um, you know the industry settled into certain kind of propagation algorithms, and they are they are you know really good, especially if you know how to work around them. Uh, you know they're really good for for like pretty much all all Wi-Fi use cases. However, uh, you know every now and then we get the question of of the classic like um, let's let's take a look at Wi-Fi coverage here. Like so, so, somebody rings us up and says, "Well, you know, this is not really how uh, how Wi-Fi works, right? If you have two pillars here, uh, you have an AP here, you have two pillars here, uh, you probably still have coverage behind those pillars, uh, even though, like, you know, the pillars are concrete, and if you look at like directly uh, approaching signals." You know, sure the pillar will stop them, but the signals do take other routes. Uh, the you know to to reach the client even behind the pillars. So, so what we uh, you know what we're accustomed to as as an industry is we actually just work around it. We just leave the pillars often away if 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 it you know creates weird heat maps and stuff like that. So we we've, we've learned to work around this. No, no problem there, and not and nothing wrong with that. But if uh, we want a little bit of granularity uh, on the Wi-Fi design. For example, uh, you, you know, to make it look look better, more, more realistic, but also kind of account for like, you know, what truly happens. I think I saw a nerd knob here, and this, like, don't take me, uh, like, let's let's see, because I I know this has been pushed in the very very latest hours or days. So, so what we can do here is we can actually click these guys. And then it calculates also non-line of sight signals. You can see how we start to, you know, get coverage also behind uh, the pillar as well. And but you can also see that it's not as quick, uh, obviously, to calculate as uh, you know, because uh, we calculate 
the line of sight signals in real time. But here it, it does take a longer time to, to calculate, but it also does represent reality a lot better. Look, look at this, like, oh, yeah, there is actually signal behind the pillars and stuff like that. And it does, you know, signals do fill in kind of, there, there is no more of these sharp signal spikes where you, where you go like concrete, drywall concrete drywall it kind of fills those those places in so so um you know it just adds a little bit more realism if you're okay with waiting for longer for the computation results uh we do have a have a pretty cool uh cool way of doing that this will be released pretty soon as well uh just for that added granularity and i think as a wi-fi industry we we've learned to you know appreciate the speed real timeness or all of that and that works for 99 percent of the cases but for example for private 5g uh those people are used to like looking at non-line of sight signals as well so so um you know why not and the beauty of this system is sometimes these, uh, you know, bounces are only calculated two dimensionally, but uh, our guys were like, yeah, that's yeah. not going to cut it. We need to calculate it three dimensionally because there's these warehouses and, and there's these, uh, you know, you know, factories where signals actually go over the shelves and stuff like that. And they were starting to think of all kinds of, you know, uh, you know, different kinds of scenarios. And quite rightfully so. So, so uh, you, you know, it's not just two dimensional, uh, you know, signal calculation. It's three dimensional, which is which to me is pretty amazing. And I don't know, uh, you know, with this level of effectiveness, if anybody else does does it like that. But yeah, yeah, I'm just excited about this this whole thing. Sorry for the long monologue. Which all of these okay. really, really are. Hey, you see, I one maybe you guys talked about it while I was over in the chat already. But one thing I noticed in uh, in that one predictive model that you did, and then you did the uh, the the live view off of that, mm -hmm. I noticed that the predictive model that you made, you used six, I think you used six and ten dBm as your two mm -hmm. transmit powers for all the AP locations, and I thought it was really interesting to look at it from the live view and see what that vendor's automatic uh automatic transmit power decide to do and how it was mostly one or two db off. well it was either dead on with what you chose or really like one or two db different so oh. it was pretty it, it was really cool i i noticed that last week when i was at uh, one of the vendor conferences and i was showing people how it worked and it was pretty cool to see that like yeah like you see design and and the 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 radio management that that vendor is using, like basically one hundred percent agreed on which transmit power to use. So that's just a little thing that I noticed in there when I was looking at it. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. And and I mean, I really like where RRM systems have been going in the recent years. Like you look at fifteen years ago, uh, they just they were not really good. It was the early days, obviously, and it was it's a tough nut to crack. But these days, like they work very well. Dan. Uh, your thoughts on RRM and kind of kind of how often do you do static versus uh, radio resource management? Very rarely doing static now. I, I I am doing RF profiles that are restrictive, and then we kind of open them out a bit, and and we might kind of you know tweak them a bit depending on you know if we're noticing that a lot of clients are connecting to a particular AP and things like that. Um, but again, yeah, like being able to actually show people that and the difference that makes and why we're doing what we're doing. And it's not just, you know, so I can charge them an extra half days consultancy, but it's actually, you know, because we're trying to do something uh, real on their network. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, definitely the, the RRM now is is really, really good. Um, well, I mean, for the vendors we use. Um, yeah, and you guys use mainly... Uh, Cisco, 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 Cisco Catalyst, Cisco Meraki, and, and Juniper Mist. Is that fair yeah. to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Only the best. What's that? <laughs> Only the best. Only the best. <laughs> Still the Aruba guys. <laughs> uh, we, we will bleep that out from the recording. <laughs> um, so, should we talk about like design? Uh, hey, uh, actually, 
I know we have limited time and stuff like that. Should we talk about collaboration next? Uh, Dan, you actually presented a little bit about this, kind, kind of like, you, you know, how, how you team up with your customers and stuff like that. And you've actually, you're you're one of our good salesmen because you recommend Hamina left and right to your end customers as well, kind of the IT administrators of the networks and stuff. But you want to talk about how you collaborate with your end customers, with your team on Hamina, stuff like that. Yeah. If you want to share, you know, please, please do as well. Yeah, I, I mean, so, you know, like the the main thing, main thing that I love is how quick and easy it is to share, right? And and even if a customer doesn't have uh, a license or whatever, they can make up their own account, they can add in comments and notes. Um, and like, so, you know, recently I was doing um, some work with, a, with an F1 team, massive big network, completely kind of ripping stuff out and putting new things in. They had, um, you know, I'd been to site a lot, but obviously, you know, my notes maybe aren't the best and all this kind of stuff. So we were going back and forth on like mounting options for particular areas and things like that. And they're adding notes into the thing. And um, it was so much easier to just do everything on the platform rather than doing, you know, screenshots and then them kind of circling things with arrows and <laughs> all this kind of stuff. We didn't have to do any of that. It was very much like, you know, there's these three comments. I can go in, we can work on it together. We'll screen share, we'll move things live, um, talk about how we're going to actually, um, you know, put things in and, and mount things properly That because they obviously know they're building their space so well, right? Um, so that's that's one way, actually working mm -hmm. directly with the end user, which is, which is awesome. Um, but... Um, I did like a, another design recently where the it was like a, a an operations center for a for a particular company. They needed to know that they were going to have like a, a a proper salt and pepper design. They needed to know that if this IDF went down, they would still have wireless coverage that would work everywhere and stuff like that. So being able to actually you know mark which APs are going back to which IDF, and then being able to effectively like simulate okay. I'm going to select all of the the blue ones now. I'm going to select all the red ones now, and and then being able to see how that affected the design and how that would work, um, that was really cool. And and we even added in uh, redundant Ethernet ports to the desk. So we I was working with the kind of switching and routing solutions architects on the amount of uh, switches we would need, what ports we would need, what PoE power budgets we needed, all that kind of stuff. Um, and we were able to model all of that within Hamina. They had a you know a login, and they could share, they could upload things. Um, so yeah, worked worked really really well. Yeah, yeah, and I think like um, the free version really does help. It lowers the barrier. So so if you have this light collaboration, people can yep. use the free version. Uh, you know, do, do the notes and and you know put in the maps and stuff like that. And you know you know. Uh, and there's different ways to collaborate. Uh, you know, a sales a sales guy or a project manager could start the project, put in the map, scope out the areas with the customer, and then share it with you to, to kind of yep. start working on the actual RF design. Only you need to have the paid license. Uh, you know, some people can have the free license and stuff like that. I, I but really but we, found, we found with customers, like once we show them what they can do and how they can do it and that we can work collaborative, collaboratively, uh, collaboratively on these designs, actually they go out and buy their own license so that they can move the APs and they can, you know, yeah. do different uh, things. And stuff oh, like you that. mean they can afford $390 for the, for the planning <laughs> license? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Shock. Hey, and uh, just so that, uh, you know, we are fair, uh, you, you mentioned Aruba. <laughs> so I should have actually done this. Uh, so very much uh, like we're, you know, we work with all the vendors uh, and we do some integration already with Aruba, but for the live view, uh, it is like we do have it coming for Aruba. This has been roadmapped together with our friends at HP Aruba. Just so, just so we are hundred percent transparent and and clear, uh, there will be like API coverage in the Aruba system that that supports this, and we will and we are very much planning to uh, to also support the live view with Hamina. Uh, Jerry was already getting threatening phone calls from his uh, ex colleagues uh, at, at Aruba. So so just to make it clear. <laughs> cancel that flight to go go out and haunt Jerry at his place in Wisconsin. We'll I'll, I'll put in the street address in the chat if you if you want to. But uh, 
oh my God, okay, this took a weird turn, but but all I'm saying is uh, is uh, you know all the major vendors will be will be supported uh, here, and it is very much our goal to cover the entire landscape here. All right, just it, it's just the fact that you know this, the API capability is available today on Arista, Juniper Mist, uh, Cisco Meraki. And, and we are also working with Cisco Catalyst team heavily uh, to, to enable many of the, these things there as well. It is often on-prem. The Catalyst Center is always on-prem. So, so there's a, you know, you know a, a, some quirks, quirks and things that we need to work around. But, uh, but you know, uh, we're working on all, all of the major, major, major and minor vendors. Fair? Uh, so about this collaboration, so people actually ended up using this more, more quickly than we thought, uh, if, if that's fair to say, because, because like we were only less than three years old as a company. <laughs> I don't know where that, those balloons came from. Did they come from this? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> uh, we were almost three years old as a company. Birthday time. <laughs> Um, so, so anyway, um, so yeah, we, like it, I've been surprised by how quickly the planner has gotten adoption among teams as well. We were like, maybe the innovators will use it like, like the Dan Joneses and, and, and shit deals. And, and then, you know, the mass adoption comes later, but it came quicker than we thought. So we kind of started run behind, by, behind, uh, our customers requests because they, they were instantly like, okay, I'm sharing this with my team, uh, stuff like that. But every time I do a project, I had to share it with every individual team member. So, so for, be, because this started to be more and more of a pain to our customers, uh, we did do a new feature for this, and this will be out very soon as well. So Dan, you actually haven't probably uh, tried this either. I don't know if you find found your way uh, to, to this, but but uh, so, and sorry, Henrik and and Rise for you know uh, revealing your emails here. But but uh, <laughs> those are if you want to reach our software architects, if you want your feature requests expedited, here's the way. Just <laughs> email Henrik and and Rise. Uh, so I'm so sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> So um, yeah, so so here you can actually. This is an upcoming feature uh, out very soon, but you can actually add add your own teams. Uh, like team Dan and friends, uh, and what what would be an appropriate uh, you know you know icon for that? I'll I'll just use a politically correct like group of people <laughs> here. Um, and then, then uh, you know, we can we can appoint members to the team. Well, this is obvious, like how how this works, right? Every every cloud collaboration tool tool has this. We've just been you know uh, in, implementing flashier features and and things like that. But you know, we're we're getting there. So so anyway, I'm gonna put. Uh, I'm also gonna reveal uh, Dan's uh, email here. I don't know if I got it right. Then I'm gonna put in John. I'm going to put Jerry here. No, no one would have guessed my email if you didn't. Put exactly. <laughs> However, if I include uh, Roger, uh, aka King Roger from our sales, his email address is the true story salesy max sales face at hamina.com. Uh, okay. Nice and, and short. <laughs> exactly. So, so, um, what what happens? You guys should have gotten like a notification. Uh, Dan, did you get a, some kind of an email? You want to show that? You want to show all of your emails? You want? Should we spend the rest of twelve minutes just reading your emails? Just reading through my emails. Yeah. Let's help Dan catch up on his inbox. <laughs> you you actually spelled my email just wrong. So. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, Jerry, do you have the? Do you have it? I got it. Yeah, I did get the notification. Yeah, I got it too. I mean, exactly. it's an email that says UC has invited you to join a team, team Dan and friends, and there's an approve button. Super exciting, but it. yeah. We totally should look at that for the last 12 minutes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so so here's here's how it works. And what I really like about this uh, is is uh, jo Joel and Jerry and, and our UX guy probably had a lot to do with this. Like how, uh, how 
quick it is to share. So, so you know, you do your project and, and it was like, I don't, I want to do as little as possible effort wise to share. You just click when you, when you start to share, you click it and you can immediately just select your team. And there it is. Like it's literally two clicks. Like select your team, and there's no even like okay, yes, confirm, blah blah blah. It's just there. So so now that project is shared shared with you guys as well. Uh, so no more like putting all your team members there. You put your team members once, and and you can create of course as many teams as you want and and stuff like that. So. So thank you all angry customers who got frustrated sharing with all of your team members for for your very vocal feedback. You know who you are. Uh, anyway, uh, where where was I? Business, business. Okay. Um, design at scale. I mean, this is just like then you do some of the larger sites stuff like that, right? You do indoor, you do outdoor, you do all kinds of stuff. Uh, I I don't know if you have projects to show but but just just to say like of course the tool has to scale for like multi-floor large buildings things like that uh and, and also like you know uh th this might have both wi-fi and private cellular so this is uh first of all the even the map image is like i don't i don't know dozens of megabytes but uh, but here's like i don't know three kilometers times three kilometers two miles times two miles of, of an area uh you know outdoors indoors stuff stuff like that uh and and dan you you've also helped us scale the product with your friend ben as well you've been reporting like oh it gets slow when i do this like astronomically big side so thank you for that but hopefully it's been mostly a pleasant experience for you so far it's been lovely um yeah 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 um what, what else do we have in store here um we talked about the collaboration. Go, go ahead, Dan. I've got, I've got a larger site I can stick on the screen if you want me to. Go, oh, man. Um, how do I, how do I do this? Here we go. Yes, yeah, so this is this is one of the bigger sites. Um, we've so this is some outdoor space, and this is actually live. Information oh wow! Well. You're you're using the live to to its limits for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, this, this is a pretty big, like hundred meters <laughs> scale. So yeah, it's a pretty big, pretty big. How big? Uh, can you can you pull the scale from like one end of the, the scale tool from one end of the map to to the next? Uh... Oh yeah, yeah. Uh... And while you're doing that, somebody earlier asked how fast is the update going to be on like a really large site? And I had to say like, I'm not really sure. Cause I haven't had, I haven't like tried go. a big site myself. <laughs> so th yeah, I guess that's, there's our answer. I, I didn't see how long it took, but it doesn't look like it took much time. No, I mean, I'll refresh it. There you go. And this loads the entire app, by the way, and the, and the map, and it takes it from the API and, uh, you know, and it updated it. So this is, this is this very second. That's freaking awesome. It didn't break. Not that, not that it ever would. I mean, it's infinitely <laughs> scaled up and all that. But yeah, that's that's amazing, man. That's amazing. Um, should we talk a little bit? We touched the free version, but uh, I, I I think we did promise to talk about pricing at scale as well. And Jer Jerry had some good points there. There. Uh, so, so, so like, you know, equipping your team with this, but I, I guess some of the points are like the free version is there. The planner starts at 390, uh, equipping a surveyor with the hardware and software starts at $2,490 uh, or euros. Uh, but yeah, then how, how are you scaling this to your customers and your team and, and stuff like that? And what are the plans? How, how, how am I scaling it? Yeah, yeah. Or, or um, what do you think of uh, how how would how would you do, how would you tell somebody to to uh, scale it in their organization if they if they have a large number of sites large number of engineers some of them do surveys uh, some of them do planning you, you, you know the and and then a large number of customers uh, how would you scale this out yeah we, let's not specifically talk about it, to talk about you but but uh, large customer yeah. a lot of sites a lot of engineers that kind of stuff yeah so. I, I like for for me it's give the right tools to the right people right so like like what we had with our our customers that were just like i'm just going to buy a license because it it gave them more flexibility right you know when i kind of said to them that it's it's not that much just just grab it even if you only use it for six months then you've got it for the six months of this project 
like go and use it you know if it's if it's useful great you can crack on you know that kind of stuff um and then yeah like give the right tool to the right person right so for four things like the the survey stuff i'm not going out there and doing loads of surveys all the time right but the people that are going out and doing that stuff then they should be the ones with the tools to go and do that that bit right the, the, i think that's why i'm so excited about this live lookup right because now i get okay my design i also get the survey from the person who's gone out and done the survey and now i get the live this is actually what's happening right now directly from the api um and so i think yeah just just being able to pick and choose what you're actually using that's what that's what makes this scale well absolutely absolutely uh -huh. even though like not it's not like you could not afford it i i think it's it's like um well, I think what, what gets interesting is when you start to break down, yeah, like what Dan was saying of like kind of the, the roles and responsibilities, especially, you know, at scale of as teams grow, like I'm I'm looking back at, you know, pr prior to Humming, I was over at uh, at Aruba and, you know, we had a lot of different engineers with different skills and different focuses and stuff. And 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 everybody dabbled in, you know, in networking and some capacity, some were focused specifically on Wi-Fi, some, you know, had a broad range of, of skills and, and, and different focuses. But I think, yeah, what's, what gets interesting is as you scale those teams out is, you know, figuring out what that solution looks like for a larger team. You know, you don't need everything, right, for every engineer, potentially. Some people are just, let's say, data collectors, right, where they're going out and doing the surveys, boots on the ground, maybe local IT staff, um, that kind of thing. They don't need the full design and engineering, you know, generating reports and a detailed analysis and things like that, they may only need to go out and collect data periodically. Um, but then you have maybe uh, your your senior engineers or your Wi-Fi network engineers or architects that actually need to be able to analyze that data, right? So different kind of skill sets, different tools, things like that. So I think what's important is having that kind of flexibility, one, for, for budget purposes, but two, just making sure that we're outfitting those teams uh, appropriately with the right hardware, with the right tools. Exactly. And those that, you know, only do the planning, only pay for the planning, that those that only do the surveys, uh, you know, you know pay, pay for the surveys. And of course, the, yeah, I forgot to say, but the teams and, uh, you know, team speech or collaboration, all of that, that also applies for the surveyors. Doesn't matter which license, you, you, you know, you have, you can, from the planning side, you can create the project, share it with a guy with a survey license, and it just, it just works, uh, you, you know, you know, or if he's in your team and stuff like that. Uh, I know we are almost at the top of the hour. I don't know if we covered 20% of, of what we promised, but... Uh, <laughs> I guess Dan, Dan overall, like, uh, how's it been? Kind of, you've you've used these kind of tools for for the longest time. Uh, how would you describe the transition project, and especially with a focus on kind of large scale and teams and collaboration? How's been the transition from from different tools to Humina and stuff like that? And you, you know, like, don't don't please me. Also talk about the like positives and negatives and stuff like that. Uh, like, like brutally honestly, like how's the transition been? Because I think there's a lot of people still there, like using previous tools. They're very comfortable using using those kind of previous generation tools and and how, how would you compare your journey like brutally honestly the good and the bad yeah no I, th I think like the 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 biggest thing the biggest kind of thing that stood out to me right at the beginning was the sharing of the report with the customer because from the very beginning with Hamina it was it was you can you can ping you can ping a url to a customer and and they can go through it and they can they can see all they need to see now some people need a pdf to stick on a on a sharepoint and that was our kind of first sticking point right was was like okay we need we need to be able to get this in pdf form so then we got that you and you had 500 other customers we yeah. obnoxiously first were like yeah we'll do the pdf later if somebody asks for it but the, this world will change to to like online reporting overnight uh, yeah, you, you yeah. know best regards obnoxious hamina guys that never happened clearly <laughs> we had to create the pdf but stuff it's, really it's, really it's funny isn't it because i think actually everyone much preferred the url report but they yeah. still needed something to stick on their SharePoint so they could sign off that the that the project exactly. had been done, right? Exactly. Um, but yeah, and and so like I, I think like the the first thing of just not having to generate a six hundred page PDF like I 
<laughs> was before, right? Of like a report on like this is this is this is your network. You know, you're never going to read this. Um, whereas now I actually get questions back from designs that I send out, right? Which which shows me that they're actually going through it. Shows me that they're actually engaging with it, which is much more important to me. Um, because I'm getting good questions back, you know, like why has this happened, or could we do this, or you know, is there is there is you know is there a reason why you've you've decided to go for this? So like my big one at the moment is putting APs under desks, right? Yeah, um, and I'm doing that all the time, and I'm able to really quickly show the difference between hey, if I put an AP under the desk and I use it like this. Or we put that same AP and we put it on the ceiling. Look at the difference. Look at the difference of how much that spreads. And it's the same TX. It's the same, you know, whatever. And they're like, ah. And they instantly get it, right? Because they can see it. They can see the difference right there and then in front of them. Um, and, and I've done and I've done things where we can, you know, you can just duplicate that really quickly, right? So you can duplicate the ceiling mounted one duplicate really quickly chuck a bunch of them under the desk and then send them two and they go there you go you can have this one or you can have this one um yeah so that 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 kind of thing with the collaboration was was really useful and then i think just as like i say like as as customers got more comfortable with it themselves they wanted to play and actually they were ending up getting their own licensing because they wanted to be able to do the things I was doing, right? Because the report, they weren't able to move stuff. They wanted to be able to move stuff and see how it worked and all that kind of stuff. So now I have like a folder with like my initial original designs and then ones that I've shared with yeah. the customers. If they mess it up, I've still got my original <laughs> one. <laughs> and once you kind of start adopting uh, the live view in scale, uh, just an idea for a future webinar, you could maybe bring like one of your knock guys as well in uh and and we could do like like uh you, you know just a fireside chat on on how then because the, your reporting and kind of customer collaboration has changed already but how's the how's this going to change your your troubleshooting as well we could talk talk about like you know your experience with the validation side surveys and then also like the you know how how, how the troubleshooting has changed just an idea for a future webinar sounds good sounds good book in <laughs> <laughs> excellent excellent uh i see henrik aalto actually actually joined the webinar uh i think he's trying to gently uh henrik are, are you trying to gently wink to me that that you know uh we need to go to our meeting uh or are, are you here at the hotel already I, would... I, I am i think we better go i'm sorry okay <laughs> okay but by the way i was showing off your work earlier i don't know if you saw uh yeah definitely dude, been here is... all along that is bad, but as as we say politically correctly here here uh, in uh, coming up. Uh, right stuff. I, I figured he uh, he was joining, wondering why he's getting all these emails uh, spammed to his inbox. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah I, I did also keep, show keep your email. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I'll I'll meet you down in two minutes, Gu guys. Is there any chance you could handle the QA? Because uh, I know it, it was my turn to host the webinar, but but we yeah we have... yeah you got but, it. Get out of here. Go do your meeting. Right. Thank, thank you so much, and thank you, Dan. Thank you, everybody. Sorry, sorry, sorry it was it, it was uh, very very unstructured. Totally my fault. But uh, I hope there was some usual uh, or useful information. Hit me up uh, on publicly on LinkedIn. What you thought of the webinar, or uh, how, however you want to do, or there's my email there's my phone number as well so you know uh if, if you want to chat more just hit me up call me whatever whatever you want so those are all on the chat uh thank you so much guys and thank you joel and jerry and, and dan always have fun hanging out with you hendrik tell Risa also i will see you downstairs in a couple of minutes greetings from Hi, palo alto. You see. this is palo alto signing out